All right, so want, want to give an update on GNU Radio 4.0, kind of where we're at. This, uh, we're at a bit of an inflection point. We want to take GNU Radio forward, do things that you might not have ever been able to do with GNU Radio, but you wanted to. So why GNU Radio 4.0? You know, we love GNU Radio. That's why we're here, um, or we're very interested in it. But it's great, it's great for prototyping, quickly getting things running on, you know, a subset of hardware that supports it. But there's some limitations, really, that we can only overcome with this big overhaul. Um, and that's what we're targeting, is a big overhaul. And some of those things that um, we've talked about year after year is scheduling, support for heterogeneous architectures, ability to do distributed computing, and just the general ease of development. So then a step back one layer, why GNU Radio at all? So if we're looking at changing such major things, you know, why didn't we just team up with some other framework out there. You know, GNU Radio is not the only solution for moving samples around and doing signal processing. Um, but GNU Radio is fully open source, actively maintained, and we have a vibrant community. And, and that sets us apart as a project that, that, that puts value into doing something that a lot of the other frameworks might not be able to do with the support and the, and the broad community that we have. You know, there is no one person, there's no one organization that is holding the keys to this project. Um, so, so it's a community. Um, we have, um, as, as Martin laid out and Derek has laid out, we have an organization in place that, that, that keeps things moving in a very democratic and organized way. So there's a community, there's an ecosystem. There's a lot of in, things that have been invested over time into the GNU Radio block library. And, and so keeping that and moving that forward as, as a GNU Radio set of blocks is very valuable. So I want to lay out some kind of pie-in-the-sky things as to you know, what I think GNU Radio could be in the long term. Um, and I want to get your feedback on this. So, so at the end of this talk, there's a, there's a link to a survey. Um, so I really want to interact as a community as to, to where you think the next iteration of GNU Radio should be going. Um, so just a few things here. One, the ability to rapidly deploy onto a large range of hardware platforms. Um, number two, and I'm not going to go into these in detail. Um, number two, a user-friendly development methodology so that, so that someone that doesn't necessarily know anything about GNU Radio can get something deployed in just minutes, right? It's very easy to learn. And three, the a large active user base. So the more people that are using it, the more people contributing, the more it benefits everyone. Uh, four, pervasive footprint in academic courses, university labs. So we can get people kind of hooked on GNU Radio at, at, a, at an early stage so that they, um, you know, as, as a tool to be able to teach signal processing and develop actual real world signal processing um, frameworks. And then, and then the last one, set things up in a way that it's supportable and more people are able to get involved and support the development of GNU Radio. So these are just some things, and I want to get feedback on you know, what's important to you. So, so one thing, and this, this has come up in some of the talks this week, is we usually see GNU Radio as sitting in this proof of concept stage. Um, you know, some, some people... Some people are sending GNU Radio out in deployments, and some people are using it for early simulation. But I would say the bulk of use cases are typically in this, I want to do a proof of concept with some actual hardware, do some uh, signal processing on these blocks on my machine. So we're hoping through the 4.0 architecture, we can push the bounds of a feasible usage of GNU Radio. We can get it to where, you know, by, say, supporting heterogeneous architectures, you, know, you can get this out on more um, more performant platforms. And then, and then also by reorganization of the block library, you can use the same signal processing with the blocks. You can use it in, in more, um, uh, more simulation type of environments. So this slide, we've, we've presented several times. Bastian and I um, laid out this vision a couple of years ago. So these are kind of the main, the main focuses for GNU Radio 4.0 development. The first is improvements to the scheduler, but not just improvements, modularity. We don't want to try, the, try to solve the problem for everyone as to how you want to schedule your signal processing tasks. We can have a scheduler, the GNU Radio scheduler, 
that, that does it in a way that hits 80, 90% of use cases um, and make improvements there. But for specific applications, specific platforms, there might be different ways of doing that scheduling. Um, heterogeneous architectures. So we've talked a lot about the custom buffers feature. We want to be able to have streamlined data movement between accelerators. And then the one that we haven't talked too much about is this distributed DSP. We want to be able to, um, say, instantiate a flow graph, and, but be able at runtime to define the resources or have it intelligently choose the resources that it's going to run on, be able to scale up in cloud architectures. Um, and do all of this, this is almost like the fourth point, do all of this in a straightforward implementation um, to where you know, the, the ease of development is there. It's not you know, each one of these things, you're, you're not having to go through weeks of training to learn how to do. So now let's take a look at kind of the current state of where the, the GNU Radio 4.0 dev branch is at. And, um, and, and then at the end, again, there's a survey link where I'd like to get some feedback, if, if possible, if you're willing to. So highlights, improve support for hardware accelerators. Um, we have modular components, the scheduler. We have an entry scheduler, which gets over this thread per block limitation. We're able to do multiple blocks in one thread. Um, but also modular, which is much more than that. Um, but we also have modular runtime and buffers, and we have some of the hooks in for distributed flow graph support. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot of places that that can go in the future. And then we'll, we'll, we'll spend a little time looking at this streamlined development methodology, which th this part excites me a lot, taking out some of the frustration of all the different boilerplate things you have to do to make a new radio box. So hardware accelerators. So 3.10 brought in this custom buffers feature, and you know, that allows, when you hit the work function in your block, the buffer abstraction says that the data is already where you want it to be when it's in the work function. You don't have to do data movement in the work function. Um, one thing that we were unable to do in GNU Radio 3.0 for the custom buffers was have any insight into other parameters about the buffer, because the 3.10 API it passes in raw pointers without any information. You just get a pointer to some data, and it says, put it here. Um, with the 4.0 block API, we have an object which, if you drill down, there's a, there's a reference to your buffer object in there. So if you have an actual custom buffer, you, know, you can get information about that buffer from that buffer object. And w just a quick example, I think it was OpenCL we couldn't do the custom buffers feature in 3.10 with OpenCL because there was more information needed about the buffer. I think it was offsets. Thing, things weren't exactly where you could represent it with just a raw pointer. So there's probably a little much detail for here, but that's kind of the motivation here. And then also, we set things up in a way that there's multiple implementations per block. So you have one representation, this is my block, but I'm gonna have the CPU version, the CUDA version, I might have a OpenCL version, I might have a Xilinx runtime version, all within one abstraction of the block. Um, in terms of modular components, this is an old result. We've presented this several times. Um, and, and, and Bastian, in I think it was 2019, did a, a very comprehensive paper on the limitations of the thread per block scheduler. There's a lot of scheduler over, overhead if you have more threads than CPU um, cores on your machine. So even ju just by lumping together the, the blocks within one thread, we're able to greatly get rid of a lot of that overhead. So, so that's, that's been done. That's the current state of the, the entry scheduler for GR 4.0. But there's a lot more we can do with modular scheduling. Um, there's, you know, it's kind of like bring your own scheduler. We don't know what your application is, um, but the normal GNU Radio scheduler, it'll probably do okay with your application, but, but if you're doing something such as, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of parallel packet processing, you might want a thread pool scheduler. Um, you have a hardware platform that has a huge bank of GPUs. There might be some other parallelization that we're just not going to handle in the main GNU Radio scheduler. So, you know, bring your own scheduler, contribute back a, um, a scheduler implementation for that. Now, distributed flow graph support. So um, imagine a situation where you have 
I don't know, rack of servers, a bunch of edge devices. You know, our goal is that the, the blocks, the flow graph that you set up can be distributed seamlessly to these compute nodes. And, you know, under the hood, we can handle all the, all the serialization, communication, synchronization between all the nodes that a single flow graph is going to span that we can, you know, distribute, we can scale up. Um, so, so we haven't, there, there was an early proof of concept of this, um, but there's a lot more, a lot more to do here. Um, but, but we have some of the hooks in place, the enabling features such as runtime modularity, reflection. There's a concept of, of parameters. So if, if I have, you know, say a constructor parameter on my block, that's a thing that, that can get moved around and reflected and, and serialized. So, so there's a lot more, um, and we'll talk about our architecture working group, but I think this is a very interesting topic for conversation going forward. Um, I'll skip that. And then the last point here in terms of the current state of GR 4.0 is a streamlined development methodology. So we want to make it as easy and accessible for users to get to do the signal processing part of a block. We don't want everyone that you know, wants to write a signal processing algorithm to have to go through 50 steps to get it wrapped into GNU Radio. We want to get straight to that work method. And, um, and, and that helps, you know, it should help bring more people contributing things into the GNU Radio ecosystem and also make blocks more maintainable. So by reducing the boilerplate through automatic code generation, we can get for free all of these you know, kind of annoyances in GNU Radio, such as doing the Python bindings, the GRC bindings, managing all of your constructor arguments, um, all of the build system scripts, the setters and getters, all, all of those things that you end up doing over and over. Let's, let's, let's get that automated. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a little, uh, a little demo of the current state of this automation. Um, just a couple of minutes. Let's see how much time I got. Yep. So, here is a, I'm going to create an out-of-tree module for GNU Radio 4.0. So just a script, it's, it's kind of like a poor man's mod tool. So I've created my module. I'm going to create a block. It's just going to take a float in and multiply by a number of K. So let's pull up the code here. So the entry point for a block is this YAML file. So everything that describes this block should be defined at this top level YAML file. So how is this going to show up in GRC? I have my parameters, which parameters are like the constructor arguments, but it's more than that. It, it's something that's represented in the block that can be changed um, in a thread safe way. So let's set this up as a float. So I have this value k that's a float. And then I'm going to have an input port, um, floating point. And we're using kind of sigmf notation for the, um, for the types here, try to make that consistent. So I have an input port and an output port. And then I'm only, we're only going to define a CPU implementation for this block at this point. All right, so I'm going to set up the build script. We're using Mason, which is a, it's, it's like CMake, but a much more py, Python interface, Python-like interface. And so that, that when, when I run Ninja, it's going to generate a whole bunch of code that you don't have to touch, you shouldn't touch. Um, and we're going to jump right to our work function. So first thing we have to deal with is instead of the raw pointers coming in, we have this, this work IO struct. So now let's grab the raw pointers out of that work IO struct. Okay, we'll grab the input pointer. We'll grab the output pointer. And then let's grab the number of items that we want to operate on. Okay, so all we're going to do in this block, stupid simple, we're just going to make a for loop and we're going to iterate, um, I mean, we're going to iterate over the for loop, multiply by k. So I'm going to skip ahead a little of the coding here. Okay, actually not too much. Okay, so in the for loop, we're going to multiply by k, but what is k? k we said is a parameter that we defined in the YAML. So jump back to the YAML, there's k. So this is a thing. So let's grab the current value of that thing. And, and we, we have a little work to do on the syntax here. Um, but this is using the new PMTF library that, that John Soleil um, talked about. 
And so we're going to grab the value of that, multiply. We're going to inform the scheduler how many items we produced. And that's it. We're done. We finished our work function. We're going to compile and install. And pop up GNU Radio Companion. Let's see what we've got. All right, so there's our block. So we didn't have to do any of the GRC work. That was all automated. Um, let's give it an input and an output. I will jump ahead a few seconds here while it does the. Uh, so I have some, um, just a visual, a placeholder visualization block. You can ignore this part. But we have. Um, Here we go. So I multiplied by the value 3, and there's our input signal multiplied by the value 3. So that whole thing, creating a block from scratch, took four minutes. So, so that's, um, that, that's kind, of, kind of the direction for the streamlined development methodology. The less steps you have to do, the better, the, the, the easier it is, the more people can get involved and do that. All right, so one other thing I want to bring up about 4.0 is um, the kernel library. So this is a little reorganization of the code. Um, that's, the concept is there in 3.10 in some of the modules. So like the filters, resamplers, they have this kernel namespace. What, what, what's a kernel? A kernel is inside of a block, another object like a filter that can be represented not as a block. It's just a filter object. And so we want to pull these out into their own library so that we don't have all the inter-module dependencies and, um, and then, you know, we, we can wrap these in a way that they're used independently um, because they're just generally useful. So before we had a, a setup like this where, so th these are the entry GNU Radio modules, um, and then this is the runtime, and then each of the, a few of these modules have kernel namespaces, and because, say, the FFT has, FFT library, GRFFT, has this kernel filter module depends on the FFT module. And then the QT GUI depends on the, or depends on the FFT module. And there's a lot, we're just trying to keep things more modular, should help with packaging, things like that. So after, now we have the kernel library, and our entry modules should be fairly independent and only depend on this kernel library and the runtime. So if you, if you have a, a few minutes today, please take a look at this survey. I want to get your feedback on you know, where, where we're going with 4.0, what you think about it, what you, know, what, what you would like to see, and you know, especially um, you know, that, that, that vision that was laid out, what, what your thoughts are on that, what's important to you. So you know, anything related, there's some you know, free form answers, so you know, let us have it. <laughs> um, so one thing that's really exciting for us as developers on GR4 there is a group um, that has, you know, we've developed a close engagement with um, Ralph Steinhagen at the Facility for Anti-Proton and Ion Research, which is a particle accelerator in, um, outside of Frankfurt, Germany. And what, what Ralph is doing here is they're, they're, they have a measurement system in this particle accelerator that's using GNU Radio across hundreds, maybe thousands of nodes. I forget the exact number. And they were interested in some features for GNU Radio that we don't have. Um, the ability to, in a distributed way, uh, configure flow graphs and, and, um, and re reflection was kind of the key missing feature there. And, and, and this engagement started by you know, Ralph informing us, hey, do you guys think that GNU Radio could do this? And that kicked off the conversation with, um, with a lot of the developers in the community, and we developed this engagement. So, so Ralph has his own, um, own middleware system, which you know, is very impressive. GNU Radio is one component in this system. So the, the digitizer component is a bunch of different nodes, hardware nodes, that are digitizing these measurements, processing um, across the entire particle accelerator. And so I, I apologize, I'm not able to represent this project very well. Um, ho hopefully we will, um, next GRCon, 
you know, get a, get a presentation uh, about this and, um, you know, learn all the successes and uh, interesting feedback. But um, this is an ongoing thing, and it's something that GNU Radio 4.0 is helping to enable the integration of the integration of GNU Radio as a component in this overall system. So, if you are more, if you are interested in this project, take a look at their um, at their GitHub, or reach out to Dr. Steinhagen as uh, he is looking for folks to to join this effort at the lab there. So, if you'd like to get involved in GNU Radio 4.0 um, development. Or, or just learning more about it, join the workshop this afternoon. I believe it's at like 3.30. Uh, we're going to go deeper into that block development methodology. We're going to show some other things that we can do with the YAML file. With, um, we're going to learn how to make easily make CUDA blocks, Python blocks. Um, we're just going to go dive as deep as we can in the time we have. Um, we also have an architecture working group. So it's, it's uh, you know, all the people that are interested in um, d discussing the, the next phases of GNU Radio development and features that are on the horizon. And then on Friday, if, if you're sticking around Friday, one thing that we would like to do is start porting some blo more blocks over to GNU Radio 4.0. You know, the more blocks that we port, the more we learn about, um, you know, are, are, we, are we going in the right direction? Do we need to change, the, um, change things about the runtime, things like that? So if, if you're around, uh, I'll, you know, I'll be around on Friday. I'm, I'm sure a bunch of others will be around on Friday and would love to work on this stuff. And then if you want to install and try out GNU Radio 4.0, there's instructions on the wiki. So if you just go to wiki.gnuradio.org, search GR4 or search 4.0, it'll pop right up. So again, our architecture working group is, um, it's a group that meets periodically probably don't meet as much as we should. But in the last year, we, we've discussed a lot of interesting features. And these discussions turn into action and turn into um, PRs, reviews. Um, cu the custom buffer feature that was done by Blacklinks on the DARPA SDR 4.0 project, you know, we were able to do some really in-depth review on that and get it into the 3.10 rele uh, release through, through this architecture working group. Um, we've talked about ways of measuring latency. So Bastian presented his, uh, his approach there. We did a lot of reviews of, of the new sketch code base. We've had conversations about distributed operation. And there's a lot more that we need to have there. Um, FPGA integration, PMT, PDU, John's, um, John's baby there. And, uh, and reflection was the latest topic about, um, about how we can better support this application at the particle accelerator. So our next call is in about two weeks, October 13th. Uh, we usually do it around noon Eastern time. And if you join the chat room architecture, um, we, we post the, the call details in there. So we'd love to see more people join in there and jump in on these calls. So just to give an idea of some of the things that, um, that we've been chatting about, things that we could use more info. Oh, actually, before I do that, so if you have ideas, you know, ideas that people have lead to very interesting engagements. Um, chat's a great place to start, to, um, to bounce around ideas, solidify, uh, solidify things, and that can turn into a GitHub issue, which, you know, we can expand and have a more in-depth discussion on GitHub than, than perhaps on chat. But once something turns into a, um, something we really think we want to do, and it's a broader change to GNU Radio, we have the, the GREP process, GNU Radio Enhancement Proposal. You know, it's GNU Radio's version of the PEP that, that Python has. And so if, if the GNU Radio GREPs, you Google it, it's, it's on GitHub. So these are more, it starts as a, as a proposal for an idea, and it gets developed more into a design proposal. Once we accept it and there's a champion, and then it turns into something that, that we can bring in as code changes. Um, some things that, you know, we're looking for input always on these, on these forward-looking ideas. Um, this one, which was submitted by Ralph Steinhagen, um, how do you make the input ports and output ports of blocks handle things that are not specific types? How do you have custom types? Like his, his example is um, they want to carry around a floating point value and a confidence interval between blocks. And we might have a block that doesn't support the confidence interval, so how do you have a data conversion that you know, drops that or adds in a zero, 
you know, zero value for com confidence intervals. So we want to we want to solve this in a very generic way. Um, how in GNU Radio 4.0, how do we handle the lack of a forecast function and converging on between stream blocks, PDU blocks? Uh, from a packaging installation standpoint, how can we have 3.x and 4.0 exist parallel? Um, so you know you don't have to install both of these um, by, from source. Um, and then th there's a bunch of other things. They're, they're all tagged 4.0 in the GitHub. Um, documentation, now that we have this top level YAML, there's a good place to put documentation at the top and now we have new options for, um, for how we can display our, our documentation in a versioned way. So like we mentioned, Hackfest Friday, want to kick around 4.0, let's start, let's start kicking the tires and porting as much as we can. And you know, if, if you don't want to jump into 4.0, and if you're around Friday, you know, let's, start, let's start hitting the issue tracker. Let's try to knock out some of these issues. So really, really hands-on day on Friday. Anything, anything you want to do, stick around to help out with the project is, is awesome. And I believe that's all that I have. Um, so thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, any questions? Before we get to questions, uh, Ralph's in chat right now, and he said 200 to 300 nodes. 200 to 300. All right. That's a lot of nodes. Yes, <laughs> quite a few. Uh, questions for Josh? Uh, so I was wondering if uh, I could get a little bit more clarification on what the uh, situation was with pie bombs. Uh, it sounded like it was sort of getting going by the uh, way of the dodo, if you will. Um, but personally, I'm a big fan of pie bombs, so I'm sad to see it go. I guess my, my two cents that I was encouraged to input here is that uh, for me, it was the thing that made GNU Radio go from completely unattainable mess to install to actually pretty consistently installable. Uh, I mean, I just reinstalled it again yesterday from source. So, I mean, I, I believe that there's going to be better tools eventually, but yeah. Yeah. No, no, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, and so PyBombs is still there. It is still maintained, but it's, I don't know, Clayton, you, you would say it's lightly maintained, right? Yeah. So, so I, think, I think it's that it works under a... A subset of distributions, it's not going to work necessarily on everything going forward or, you know, new things being thrown at it might not work. So if it works on your setup, that's great. Um, but someone tries it on some other distribution, some, something comes out. I, I, don't, I don't know if all of the recipes are being kept up to date to the extent to support a broad range of, of, of distributions or... Um, yeah, it's just that we're not we're not investing effort necessarily into pi bombs and maintaining that because because there's so many other people there's so many other solutions for package um, package management that you know as a as a pretty small medium sized project it's hard to manage that solution you know across such a broad ecosystem. Hi, I'm Maitland. I package for Debian. The pie bombs issue uh, is a kind of a precursor to packaging things in a distribution. Everyone on GitHub, you've got your projects. Um, yeah, make sure you're clear on the licensing so that we can share the code with each other. Secondly, make a version tag. Uh, third, communicate what versions your project on GitHub works with on GNU Radio. That way, the pie bombs recipes can be maintained. Things can go into distributions. So my call to everyone is release early, release often, and communicate what versions work. Got time for a few more questions before the morning break. Hey, um, I don't know what it takes to do this, but I know that I've downloaded virtual machines before that come like preloaded with certain types of software. Um, have you guys ever considered doing something like that? Is that something that you could do? 
Yeah, I, I, believe, um, I believe Derek this week was putting together a virtual machine. We had it at last year at Con. Um, the kind of the latest release is all packaged together on a, on a virtual machine. Um, so it's something we've done in the past, and I think that's in the works. So um, it's, maybe Derek can comment on chat as to what the current status of that is, but it was definitely something going on. The thing, yeah, no, thanks for bringing that up. That is a, a, good, a good method for distributing a quick, quick solution. One more. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we are. Uh, just quick follow-up question to what I asked earlier. So, if uh, if that's if Pybombs is being phased out, what's the recommended tool for uh, installing? Uh, from source, including out of tree modules and the like. Mm -hmm. um, the recommended, I mean, the recommended approach, are you saying from source? Yeah. <clears throat> so I would say from source, the recommended is a, you know, you, you, you basically do what PyBombs does, but don't rely on PyBombs necessarily to do all of your dependency management. Um, so it's, that first piece that PyBombs does, setting up your prefix, that takes care of most of what you need PyBombs to do besides the dependency and the, the out of tree modules. So I don't really have a great answer there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I would say, yeah, from, from source is just you, you, manage, you manage the prefix yourself and, and download the code for all of your out of tree modules and install them to the prefix yourself. Sorry, Jacob. Thank you, Josh. All right. Cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>